Daytona, it's always the same new story. Record crowds gathering. Record purse, over $9 million this year at stake. And always that same old electricity is creeping through the sold-out grandstands in the infield for the 40-second running of this, the great American race. On pit road, the drivers are ready, the two-time champion, Bill Elliott starting third, looking good. And Mark Martin feeling good for the first time in many years. Darrell Waltrip, the 89 champion, he'll start dead last. And Ricky Rudd makes his 23rd effort from outside of the front row to win this race. The major story, Dale Jarrett, his car being repaired from that incident yesterday. The question now, will this impede his effort to win a third Daytona 500. Let's join Dick Bergren from Speedway Illustrated Magazine with a 93 and 96 champion. Thanks, Ken. In the days leading up to this Daytona 500, Dale Jarrett has been the favorite. He won the pole. He has been consistently among the fastest in all the qualifying practice sessions. But that crash yesterday was a big one. Your crew said it was a huge thrash. Is this thing ready to go? Uh, I hope they tell me it is. Uh, just thank you to all the guys. They've done a, just a great job of repairing this car. It was unfortunate. You know, we were only out there on our last run. Something happened in front of us. We slowed down and got caught up in some things. But uh, they did a great job. Todd me assures that everything's going to be all right. And uh, we'd like to say hello to uh, Jeffrey Bodine. Jeff, we're thinking about you, man. Best wishes to you, and uh, look forward to seeing you out here soon. Good luck in the 500. Terrell Shaheen. Only five father-son pairings have ever raced the Daytona 500 together. Richard and Kyle Petty, Richard and his father Lee Petty, Buck Baker and his son Buddy, and of course, Davey Allison and his father Bobby. And here we have Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Jr. <laughs> Dale, can you tell me a little bit about what it's like for you today? Is this feeling of racing with your son in the Daytona 500? Well, we've been doing a little bit of racing through the years now, and uh, last year and this year, and got to race in IROC with him, but uh, to run in the Daytona 500 is a pretty special moment for me, really. Uh, uh, my first Daytona 500 was so awesome, it was just uh, overwhelming. But, uh, uh, now, again, him him being in it for his first time and me being in it with him, that's that's pretty awesome, an awesome day, too. So we're going to hopefully race some together. Maybe maybe we can help each other win, one of us win. So that, that would be a really a nice uh, touch to the day. Dale Jr., I'm sure, as a father and son, you two shared a lot of great moments together. What does this mean to you today? Uh, well, I'm being pretty excited, <laughs> just to say the least. Uh, I was uh, so worried about making the race or just having a spot in the race, and we did way beyond my expectations. Uh, we're starting eighth, and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. Hope we have a good day. Uh, 500 miles is a long ways, and we don't try to stick around there to the end. To Bill Stevens. Thanks, Ralph. Jeff Gordon has won two out of the last three Daytona 500s, won it here last year from the pole, but a lot of changes since then, Jeff. Can you do it again today? I certainly think that we can. Now, we've put together a, a great group of guys that have been working extremely hard on our super speedway program, been working real hard in the engine uh, room on these restrictor plate engines, and they, they've definitely done their homework, and, and we've had good results. Uh, you know, we just we need a 500-mile race. Uh, we're going to make some good clean pit stops, and uh, just hope that's a safe race today. He starts on the inside of row 11. Let's go back to Ken Squire. Well, we're just about ready for the traditional Daytona pre-race ceremonies, and we'll join the president of the Daytona Speedway at the start-finish line area, John Graham. in motorsports, the Grand Marshal of the 42nd Daytona 500, Goodyear Chairman Sam Jabara. Gentlemen, start your engine! Good, good day, everyone. Ken Squire here, and welcome to CBS coverage of the 42nd running of the Daytona 500. 
Every year, there are thousands of main events played out at weekly racetracks across America. And nearly every weekend, there's a major date for the Winston Cup Series. But ask any fan, ask any driver. There's only one race that epitomizes all this sport has grown to me. This, the Daytona 500. Its prelude yesterday had some excitement. Matt Kenseth came home the winner, the Wisconsin driver. But take a look at this moment. That is Michael Waltrip, out of control, tri-oval, into a series of sidewinders. Nine shattering snap rolls. Less than an hour later, he was out of the infield care center, into his Winston Cup car, practicing for today's race. Sore but determined, he will start 10th today. Let's go topside now with Mike Joy. Thanks, Ken. Three months of anticipation, and it's finally here. The biggest race of the year and the toughest to win. It took Dale Earnhardt two decades to win the 500. It took Darrell Waltrip 17 years. And let's look at Buddy Baker's 18th try 20 years ago. Buddy Baker, what's going through your mind right now? If it runs like it ought to, I'll be seeing you over in the victory circle later on. And after all those years of effort, all those heartbreaks, Buddy Baker has done it. This car and that driver have just won the fastest 500-mile race that has ever been witnessed on the face of the earth. Buddy Baker, what does it mean to have won the 500? You know, I still get goosebumps just thinking about what this race meant to me. It's life-changing. It's the biggest race we run in. And somebody out there in that 43-car field today is going to get to experience what I did when I won the Daytona 500. I'll never forget it, and he won't either. Ned Jarrett, twice a NASCAR champion and now America's premier race strategist. What should the folks at home look for today? A lot of ingredients, Mike, should keep this thing exciting all the way through. There's seven rookies in the field. They're running under new rules this time for the Daytona 500, shock absorber and spring rules, which affects the handling of the cars. How will that work out? The wind is much stronger here today than we've seen it any time since we've been here about 10 days ago. That could play a factor as well. And the temperature is certainly different today. We had a cold front went through here this morning. We've been in 80 to 85 degree temperatures for the last several days when we were setting these cars up. Now we'll be going to be in the 60s, maybe get into the low 70s. That can have some effect too. We'll be back with the starting lineup and the green flag for the 42nd annual Daytona 500 after this. CBS Sports presentation of the Daytona 500 is sponsored by Ford F-Series. The official truck of NASCAR is built Ford Tough. Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's Improving Home Improvement. And by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. Welcome back to the Daytona 500, part of Speed Weeks 2000 of Daytona, presented by Fritos. As Ned mentioned, a cold front came through here this morning. Yesterday, we had mid-80 degree temperatures in Daytona Beach. Today, the temperature will not hit 60. High humidity and the wind has shifted. It now comes from the north, and it's a stiff breeze out there for today's Daytona 500. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. Dale Jarrett, two times the Daytona 500 champion, and his Robert Gates teammate, Ricky Rudd, share the front row. Row two, two-time winner, Bill Elliott, and Mike Skinner, fourth here last year. Rusty Wallace makes his 18th try to win the 500. Ward Burton, eighth and 97. Tony Stewart started on the front row last season, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., could he be rookie of the year? Row five, Mark Martin, 15 tries to win it. Michael Waltrip, fifth last year. Jeff Gordon has won two of the last three 500. Derek Cope, the winner in 1990. Bobby Labonte, a close second two years ago to Earnhardt. And Jeff Burton in his seventh 500. IndyCar star Scott Pruitt makes his Winston Cup debut. And Joe Nima checks in the 500 for the sixth time. Former IndyCar racer Robbie Gordon in his third 500. And Kenny Irwin, third last year. Jeremy Mayfield ran third here two years ago. And Jerry Nadeau joins the Hendrick team. Dale Earnhardt, it took him 20 years, but he won it in 98. And Jimmy Spencer in his ninth 500 start. Ken Schrader, the runner-up in 89, and yesterday's winner, Matt Kenseth in the Bush race. Terry Labonte making his 22nd start, and rookie at Barrier. Johnny Benson in the race for the fourth year, and Rick Mann. Chad Little, two straight top tens, and John Andretti in his seventh 500. 
for sprint car star Dave Lady, a Daytona rookie with Robert Presley. Truck Series graduate Stacy Compton and Wally Dunnanback. Mike Bliss racing for A.J. Foyt. Steve Parks cars owned by Earnhardt. Bobby Hamilton makes his 10th start. And Sterling Marlin, winner in 94 and 95. It's the fifth Daytona 500 for Rusty's brother, Kenny Wallace, and Elliot Sadler driving for the Wood Brothers. They've won it four times. Kevin LePage from Vermont in his third 500, and Kyle Petty makes his 19th try to win it. And three-time wins to Cup champ Daryl Walter, the 1989 winner. There were 14 drivers who failed to qualify for this year's Daytona 500, including the Bodine brothers, Jeffrey and Brett, and Dave Marcus, who will end a 32-year streak of making the Daytona 500.